favorites. And in case you have been watching for a while, you'll notice that we did our favorites a while ago. This is the next generation. And what that means is this time we are... Do you want to take away his right to have favorites? We all have favorites. And that's what I was My thinking. favorite was not that. <laughs> well, my favorite is that. And you know what else is my favorite? The fact that we get to go through all of our top tens. It, 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 yep, and we got to get the worst one out of the way. Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. I mean... We say that all, he, he, all his movies are good. Thank you, Jerry. All his movies are blockbusters. <laughs> no, most that of doesn't them. mean that... Actually, are they, though? All, uh, most of them. All but, like, one, I think. I would, would be I the would one that I would... Or Midsummer, w- this one. Or I wouldn't go spoiling. Oh, well. Regardless, this one, I... This, Knives Out isn't a blockbuster. I suppose that's yeah. fair. This, this is one This is not a blockbuster. Number either. eight, right? This is my eighth yes. favorite. Yes. Okay, yes. My eighth favorite movie of all time is Midsummer. And let me paint you a picture as to why. Here we go. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> So I truly believe that the best. What are you doing? I'm painting a picture. <laughs> She's got okay. Bob Ross as Owen Wilson over here. Bob Ross yourself out. Wow, a picture. <laughs> anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, I'd like to say my favorite movies are the ones that make you like really strongly feel things, whether it's joy, whether it's sadness. I get sad all the I time. I definitely felt something or, watching this. <laughs> Or whether it's fear or horror or just uncomfortableness. <laughs> and <coughs> that's, I think that's part of the reason as to why I love horror movies so much, at least good ones, is because they really make your skin crawl. They really get, like, under your... They're unbearable. Uh, oh. <laughs> 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 and so that's Spoilers why. ahead. Okay. I just had to fit that in there. So that's why I found myself drawn to Ari Aster movies and specifically Midsummer. I I truly think this is just a masterclass in tonal control and um directing because the entire movie you are stressed out. It starts oh, actually before I get too too crazy, I wrote off a list here, so let me just go back and So I'll just while we're waiting for you to do that, I'll just say I must be broken. I wasn't stressed like at all. Really? I mean, this was your first watch, wasn't mm-hmm. it? It just kind of was what I expected it to be. That doesn't make it not good. It's good, right. and I like and I like it except for a you know, number of scenes. Mm-hmm. But uh, it just kind of was what I expected it to be. It, it in fact, it was kind of less than I expected it to be because everybody had built it up as like. Oh my gosh, it's so unsettling and yada yada yada. And it's, the most unsettling part was watching that woman bounce off that rock. That is pretty oh. gruesome. That is really gruesome. You know, that's interesting because I that is fair. I will sit really quick before I get into my list. Expectations are truly one of the worst things in the world when you watch movies because you want to know which one was ruined for me. Ant Man. <laughs> A quiet place. That's fair. Because before I've seen it, all I've heard is just incredible. It's the best. It's just like top line. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. I'm like, it's so hard to get that out of your head before you watch something that you can't help but be disappointed by what you watch. And it's fine. And it is. I would argue that it's good. It is fun. It's just so hard to like. There is one moment that undercuts the whole movie. I think I'm on your side about that now. But midsummer. But yeah, but so yeah, I just it's interesting you point out expectations because I think that's a big issue with this, and I guess because I like the first time I remember seeing this, I was who were you with? I was I think it was just trying to remember if this was the first time or the time that I remember the most. It was me, my girlfriend Sam, and uh, it wasn't the first time. It wasn't the first time. I must have been Jared like, was yeah. your first time in There's this case. There's a group case. of us. <laughs> Jared was my first. Time. Well, there was a group of us that went and saw it. So at the theater we worked at at the time during okay. hours. Oh, remember okay. that? Kind of, yeah, I kind of do. You were late. Of course I was. <laughs> but and so and that's my first time. But the one time I actually remember the most. I have to give it a shout out because the theater no longer exists. But the Landmark Theater in Royal Oak, Michigan, they oh, played yeah. a lot of really yeah. good deep cut movies. A lot of just isn't like, that the one that used to do the midnight showings of Rocky Horror? Probably, yeah. I like it was that a theater. great theater. That's where I went to go see this with Sam and her friend Ryan. 
and it just, it just, it just, it, it, it encapsulates. I, I can't get over how impact, like, I think what sets the movie off the most for me is the opening death scene because of just how, oh, yeah. It's gruesome. That's what it was. It's just so gruesome and so brutal. Like, just the imagery of them taping the, Ugh. um, yeah, I know. You're talking about the mask she's wearing with the hose to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mask she's wearing with the hose from the car. It, that The movie is very good at setting up the sense of dread from that point, mm-hmm. and the rest of the movie feels like that. From that, like mm-hmm. Even if it's a funnier moment, there's just it's, it's looming over everything. You know, what, what, yeah. you know what I think really helps that, don't I? And don't get me wrong, I'm not dead inside. I did feel that dread, although it was not <laughs> what people had made it out to be to me. Mm-hmm. Um, what really helps that I think is like the, the artsy way I want to put it is the dryness in the scenes and like the, the audio of like, mm. it, it's very spatial. It's very spatial. And cause like, I'm trying to like you point out the auto trying to remember, cause I think all you hear is like rustling in like the sirens and like, that's about it. And then it's just like the slow moving shots from the like once you see the the thing attached to the car you're like oh god and then it just keeps going just keep thinking oh god and then it just slowly moves into you see it's going to the parents room it's going into yeah the face mask and it's definitely just, uh i was referring to when they were in the then in, in i'm gonna call it a commune i don't know what it actually is in where the, cult, the commune it's yeah um I was specifically referring to that, but you're right with that. Um, what I noticed about the opening was a lot of the camera work um, isn't folk in the, in the opening specifically. Mm-hmm. It isn't focused on like the focal point of the scene. Like when it's moving, like if her sister's here, like it goes up through the window right here and mm-hmm. doesn't like you kind of got to you, you follow her, but like the motion then. is over the top of her just like. No, like she's not even there. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was really interesting. It's just like, like it simultaneously says, like, look at this horrifying, disturbing thing that she'll probably never ever see again. And then we're gonna keep going further. What's interesting then is that when uh, Florence Pugh, when they actually get, that, is, it, what, is it Sweden? Is that where it is? Yeah. When they get to Sweden, and she, her name is Danny. Mm-hmm. Danny. Um. When they get to Sweden, like Danny Phantom. <laughs> not spelled like that. With an I. Yeah, D-A-N-I. Okay. Um, when they get to Sweden, they get high, and uh, she goes to the bathroom. Uh, she's yes. having her bad trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. It and starts and, off with, and you see the grass growing through. Oh, that's another just weird visual. I just... You know, the whole movie does that with plants, where they're like yes, morphing. They're always moving. And you in... told me you didn't notice it on the table. Yeah, I, no, oh, I didn't really? notice. It. I didn't notice it on the table. Which is, or at least I, d- I don't remember noticing it. It's very mm. subtle. I like it's now. It's not jumping out at you, but if you see it, you'll. Yeah, but oh, that's that's, cool. that's when visual effects work. Unlike Ant Man. <laughs> um, Someone just watched Ant Man. <laughs> uh, watched is not what I would call that. <laughs> Anyway, um, when when she lights the match and her sister's face is in the, oh, it's it, it's in the God. same spot as that opening shot when it's going like over her. It's mm-hmm. really interesting and it's so quick. Yeah, it I had is. to rewind it Me like too. three I times. Again, I was that's, like, that's what I like is that like compared to like I feel like other cheap like bad horror movie directors because there's listen, it doesn't feel like a jump scare. Century. There is so many dumb horror movies where it just says, boom, scare, boom, scare. I'm tired of those. I like that Ari Aster just throws in the most disturbing thing and then just moves past it. He doesn't draw attention to it. He lets you realize it's there, and that's what makes it actually uh, scary. It's because it's what you think you saw. Mm-hmm. What does it, it reminds me of a scene from The Exorcist mm-hmm. where out of all the things that, yeah, you can, as much as it is a great movie, there are... It has its campiness to it. It's the 80s. That shot of Ellen Burstein in her kitchen and the lights flicker and there's like a face right by her, but it's like two frames. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. Yes. And I, my, my sister and I were watching We had to back it up and we're like going, you know, frame. Oh. oh. It's like this ghostly face. It's just like right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. So I love horror movies. I love giving the heebie jeebies because I don't like. The Oogies? No, that? that's a different thing. <laughs> Because, like, I don't, like, 
like that, that kind of stuff like in real life doesn't really scare me all that much per se but like when you can use it like effectively in movies I just oh, I dig it oh. so good okay so I'm gonna keep working through there is a scene in this movie that uh, it's funny it's not laugh out loud funny because there's this sense of dread to it uh-huh. that somebody at this table burst out laughing in the theater <laughs> Completely. Was it me? No. Oh. Completely ruining the vibe for everyone in there, and everyone of, giving you this look like I, it's not that I funny. Don't was it what the? This was, but you're gonna have to remind no. Me. No, that I can see. The, the, oh, the, that part I did laugh. The pushing was, is the pushing is funny. Him. I'm talking about Will Poulter peeing on their answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to talk see, about when you when say you're, it like that. It is funny. <laughs> When you watch it, it's not hilarious. It's just like, oh no! It is. But this guy, as we're all kind of feeling this dread, like, like I mean, he he's because he says, "I'm gonna go take a piss," and he leaves, and and you're not thinking. About it. And then when a guy's yelling, I'm like, oh no! Like, and it shows him like like going and, and digging. <laughs> and everyone in the theater just kind of like looking at him. I could see him turning around in the dark, like, who is this guy? Like, it's not that. It's not that Way funny. to read the room, Dicky. <laughs> so same guy yeah. during Bohemian Rhapsody. It's not oh, even I don't even remember the joke. Listen, that was no it wasn't a joke. It was a bad story beat when he walked out in the south. Remember it was like raining and he and like the It's not that, that part. is like your most hated scene in cinema, isn't I just it? I don't like that. I there don't know there was a moment really where that. someone says like responds to someone and it's like a throwaway line that's supposed to be like a half joke it's not funny and out loud <laughs> as the sound out in the movie drops we're saying ha <laughs> and everyone's looking at us that's twice twice that we've seen a movie together where you may you, you just draw all the attention to yourself like i thought i drew enough attention to myself watching lincoln as an 18 year old and all these old people are staring at me in the dark because I laughed at his at his funny story <laughs> of course like it's supposed to be funny and there are all these old people who don't like cuss words just looking at me like eh, who's this kid <laughs> laughing in the back corner it was funny I wasn't that loud but you were so loud when Will Poulter was taking a piss just, <laughs> Will Poulter's character is I, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. He's just really funny to, to watch in the background. He is. Yeah. Like I, that's I. The, the first watch I've ever thinking like is he feels like he's in a completely different movie for some reason. Then this watch, mm-mm, no. No. He, I was loving it this time. Yeah. He's in, in. Oh god. I just I. You know, you, you brought up a poster, so I don't have to go into the performances. That I think that's the only thing that just pushes this thing to the next level. Man, every single actor is giving it like their two hundred percent. The the, the 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 scream, the wail. That Florence Pugh puts out when, like after her. Okay, going back to the when they're game. all crying together. No, that too. Oh, you're talking. About oh, you talk about I'm when she finds out about her sister. Right back to the beginning. And it's like and that, it's barely a wail because there's it's, like it's when you've cried so much that it's just you're hearing like the bottom of your vocals just kind of honk. Mm-hmm. And we all know that feeling. Yeah. And it's like uncomfortable. And you're hearing it go. <sighs> like. <sighs> and you're I like, even, oh. I can't even recreate it, but yeah. it's. Because again, it's called. She's been crying and wailing already that we haven't seen that she is just. She just can't stop. <coughs> it, it's God. She. She's so I, good in this I'm movie. I'm so mad because I don't think any of the actors or anything from this, this, this get nothing. Any kind of nomin- nothing. Not a single one. Because it's a horror nothing. movie. Nothing. Oh, yeah. nothing. It is ridiculous. The Academy needs to uh, like realize that genre movies are like actually very very good. And, uh, it just gets my gears grinding. And the other person that does a great job is my boy from Sing Street. Um, Jack Rayner. Jack Rayner, yeah. Playing the worst boyfriend in the world. <laughs> he is Christian. such a dick. So I, I got I to gotta tell you, when she's talking to him about her sister, and he, he starts off with, well, aren't you kind of enabling her? I'm like, mm-hmm. you f- <laughs> He is. Jeez. He is just the absolute <laughs> worst it's funny because when you he's not a bad person but when you look at how i, I like how the the how do i phrase this he is the worst boyfriend ever not because he's a bad person he's inconsiderate he's incredibly inconsiderate. It's, he just does not care in which and you can also see later in the movie when he doesn't care about i'm gonna, I'm gonna call him cheaty because that's what he plays in the good place but, this um, was the best. William Jackson Harper. Who was in Ant Man? Who was in Ant Man? Oh my God, he wasn't. 
for three, four scenes. This was the best good place prequel that I could have asked for. <laughs> so this is before he goes to yeah, the This good is place. how he goes to the good okay. place. Yeah. <laughs> Which may, I mean, because like, and, and I think he's just really good at playing smart characters because like that's kind of like he was like trying to, you know, just like read all the books and like try to gain as much knowledge and he's still like, like they're all tools and they're all dead. Yeah, someone, I, I thought I read, it might have even been Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, some people, some people have it interpreted as a fairy tale about different types of toxic masculinity. Honestly, because yeah. it's not the the type you're used to. It's like they're they're intellectuals because they're these grad students, mm-hmm. and they're like different sides of it. Because you know, uh, what is his character's name? The one, the good place guy, Josh. So Josh yes, is kind of like this know it all type, mm-hmm. and there are scenes where it's like he he's he's kind of he never is exploiting. They're customs, but it kind of feels intrusive. It, yes, that's a good word to use. And, like, he, like, and he straight up sneaks sneaks around to go look goes, at the thing. Takes and, pictures, and then you see like the shadow, like the shadow of the person. And it's like you, you know, it's like oh, he's screwed. Yeah, I'm like like Christian is just the inconsiderate type mm-hmm. type, and mm-hmm. then also just straight up rips off his his idea. That's, yeah, that's what I was gonna get back to is that he just like that's such a like. He really is just like I know you pult. said like he's not a horrible person, but he's not a terrible he person. Has he's the just tendencies in, that are there. That's just it, it, it feels too easy to just call someone a bad person. In this case, I think it's like mm-hmm. I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's a good person. He's just kind of he's just inconsiderate. There is nuance to his and character. And he was so. going to break up with her, and then that happened. So he's kind of stuck in a position, and he handles it very poorly. Yeah. That's why I, extremely I poorly. <laughs> the the scene, I think, the scene that cinches it for me. I'm like, okay, I like how they they portray this. She's trying to tell him about the British couple disappearing, or one of them. I can't remember if yes. it was the one or both. And she's trying to talk to him, boyfriend. and he says, "I'm sure it's fine." And then he goes right back to talking to he's the person so about incest. I know, like what, like that's the other thing, like. I, and it I focuses on I, her. It doesn't focus on him. It focuses on her reaction to it, mm-hmm. where she's kind of just like she can't believe she's bringing something this this serious, and he's just shrugging it off. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Like I, I, I see if I wrote it down, but I didn't. It came to my mind. I was like, he's the ultimate gaslighter. <laughs> you think? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> like I just, oh, and that's why I, I love the. Uh, I don't remember what interview this was that I was watching with um, Ari Aster, but he was like saying just essentially this movie is just the world's worst breakup movie, and that really is just what it comes down to. It's worst? Just like, I thought it was the world's best breakup movie. <laughs> okay, well, best. No, 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 no. Those been into Sharon. Yeah, 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 oh, that's. <laughs> One thing I noticed because they don't like, I respect this movie because they don't like try to hide things from you. Like, like they don't try to trick you. No. Mm-hmm. Like horror films often do. There's they don't no, pull the rug out in the Yeah, there's, there's no twist villain. There's no nothing. So right at the beginning when they first get to the commune, they, there's this pan across all yes. of the, like, yes. I'm going to call them tapestries. I don't know if that's what they were. I think it was a tapestry. It's but tapestry. like It's there, actually there's... after my favorite exchange of the whole movie. We'll get to that in a second. Or do you want me to do it first? <laughs> you want to do it first? How Let's excited you, are you about this exchange? I don't want to step on your point. That's why. Yeah, you make your point first. So... It, What's going to happen in the movie is it's painted it's all over everywhere. Right? Yes. So I'm I'm watching this tapestry go by and I'm like, okay, this is going to come back. I know that this is going to come back. Like they're not hiding it from me at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I'll tell you the moment it did, when they were having breakfast and I looked down the row of glasses and, and they're all orange and then one of them color. is kind of this color if you're and i go youtube then you can see jake drink oh <laughs> and then he drinks it uh, yeah and then he just finds the hair in there <laughs> see i thought the hair came from the pie it did oh you're right the I, hair did oh, come so, from the so pie. it came from the pie it was yes, in his mouth right. though he picks well, it out of his teeth. Immediately, was, I think it was Will Poulter. I, I keep forgetting. It's like, is that a? Is that a? <laughs> and all, that was the moment in our in, uh, when we were seeing it mm-hmm. that because the drink thing did not register to me right away, and mm. I think we were all like whispering and so on. Said something, but then once he picked that hair, I go, I think, a, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I have never been so disgusted by putting a movie together like that in right. my life. That's what I love that. I'm so happy you pointed that out because that's what I love so much is that it shows you what's coming. 
you know what's coming, but you don't realize it. I wrote down the one of the very first shots in this movie. It, uh, it was in one of their house. I think it was in Danny's apartment. Actually, there was a picture of a bear over her bed. And is it really? Yes, oh, there I is. didn't notice that. Huh? And, 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 and I must have watched The Shining too many times. It's like, that, yeah, honestly, like it's the. I, I'm not gonna call them Easter eggs because they're not Easter eggs, but it's the um. It's illusions. Thank you. It's that's, illusions that's, and foreshadowing. That's a better word to use. Harbinger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, just, he uses them so well, and I just love Easter that. egg. Yeah, nah, I no. Easter eggs is probably. I, say, I would say Easter is eggs is to something else. Yeah. Outside of the property. Oh, that's yeah. That's a good point. But sorry, Jerry. But you were gonna say that your favorite games. <laughs> so they. So they're. So they're walking. The ma- our main group splits off, and then the two British, the British couple are with the, you know, they're the guy who brought them there. The- and then he just goes, "So we just gonna ignore the bear then?" And there's a cage, the cage bear. And goes, yes. And the their guy goes, "It's a bear." <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like just, it's a bear. Just, just casually, it's just a bear. so matter of fact. And then, right and then that's when we pan to the tapestry. Yeah. But it's really, it's a bear. <laughs> And I like that. For I think the British couple was really like well used to show how normal people would react to this situation. Because I don't think any of our the crew that we follow are particularly no. normal. No, but also well, they were in shock. I mean, Florence Pugh is yeah, she's kind of damaged at this point. I love mm-hmm. that quick cut where what right before they fall, they haven't even fallen yet, and it cuts to her grabbing Christian's arm. Mm-hmm. She just grabs him real quick, and that's a very real thing that we can feel and have probably seen or have seen other people. It's just, yeah, it's just this <gasps> because they haven't even jumped it. Because how how just think how easy it could have been executed poorly if they jump and then she grabs. There's no suspense in that. It's just a reaction. Or something. But here um, she grabs before they even jump because I think it's I, they're just standing up there. I think so for context because I didn't hear you actually say it. you're talking about the 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 right. old oh, people death yep. scene. Yeah. Right before they jump, she grabs. It's not after they've jumped and she. <gasps> it's a reaction like she to it. She knows She's, what's going to happen. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. it, it's and very, just grabs his arm. It's just. Oh. Yeah. It's a very visceral movie. It is, and I really like the like how the. The second guy that jumps, he didn't actually like land. Oh, like, and, and then they have like to show snap. it, and then they have to keep going back, and, and then you have to see the hammer repeated, smush his face. Repeated, repeated, like that is. Like, I, I can see that in my mind, and it's just Ugh. It's horrifying. Like I know it's fake, and it's like. Oh. Now I have to ask you because bringing that up reminded me of another thing. They, well, first off, just period, the, the, the effects in this, uh, they're clearly like a blend of practical and visual because they work so well. The scene where I, I think it's Christian is running around once he's naked and he's running out of there and he comes into, I don't remember who was hanging up. Do you know what I'm talking about? When he's hanging up and it like has like his organs flying That's out. the English dude, Yep, I think. That was the English guy, okay. That is maybe one of the most disturbing things I've ever Disgust. seen. Just gross. And I love it. <laughs> Yet another oh. thing that was on the tapestry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it I, was there. I, I think I missed that one. I, didn't yeah, I don't know that. if it was on the tapestry or on the barn wall, but it was there. That was there too? Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that. That's even the only thing I really didn't understand what the point of it was in this movie was the, the, in, the, like, the inbred line. That was clear minded. I didn't understand what are you, point it which served. Which one are you referring to? So them bringing outsiders in? No, 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 no. There's, there's one line of people that they keep inbred because it keeps their to, mind clear. Yeah, because they're the one that like scribes and, down everything. Yeah. I, I don't. I, like they showed that person a couple of times, mm-hmm. and I don't really. And that person was wearing Will Poulter's skin. No, I thought that that was the dude that yelled at him. I thought it was the. I don't remember. It's and it's hard to tell. Oh, I thought it was because he was like breathing hard. I th- mm-hmm. that would make sense, but I honest. He's I, not the one that clubs him. He was just wearing Will Poulter's skin, in the scene where they kill Josh. But but even even then, like I don't understand what the point of um, unless it's just kind of a lore thing. I, I wonder if it's a lore thing or if it's. I think in my head, like what that could mean. Yeah, I don't. I'm not it, really it doesn't sure. really hurt it. It's just something I didn't understand about it. And in a movie that 
told me everything and didn't make me want to understand anything. Mm-hmm. That's where I kind of think another strength of it is, is that you could read... Like, I'm, I'm jumping back now to the end about just, like, them burning up everything and him in the bear suit and Danny smiling. Like, a lot of... I see a lot of just, like, YouTube channels or a lot of online critics who are like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Like, there's like there's so many different, like... Um, I mean, she's either accept, accepting the position she's in mm-hmm. or her mind is breaking or both. Well, because, like, it, it, that's what I, I like that it's... You can still get a lot of different meanings from it, but for me, it's simple. She's finally felt like she's a part of a community. Or yep. She's a part of a group, which is what she's been wanting to feel this entire time. She lost her family, and now she has found a new family. Yeah. It's, she, uh, I thought I read something like that. She lost her family, so she tries to confide in her boyfriend for that, because I, now, it as much as it's not fair to shoulder that much weight on one person... Uh, you should at least be there for your girlfriend who just lost her parents and sister. In a horrific suicide. But So basically like it's her, like, ridding herself of the toxic part of her life and finding a new family. Mm-hmm. It's in the most sick, twisted way. <laughs> but, man, the, that last ten minutes is some of my favorite I movie don't know. ever. Yeah. It's, There's it's an perfect. argument that say, for a person in a state like that, connection is connection. True. Mm-hmm. And that's what she was just trying to... And I think the big... The big twist when she started to feel that connection was that I know we were talking about like briefly the screaming scene like with all the people mm-hmm. that were like crying. And Much screaming. shorter on a second watch. It felt I like thought the same thing. It Jared. felt so long that first watch, and this time I was like, I thought that was longer. Me, still you know, a great you know, scene. I must so not have been into the like engrossed in this movie as much as you guys were in the theater because I totally did not think that they did that they fleshed that out enough. I thought, I mean, maybe it was because I saw it in the theater and I obsessed over this I mean, movie. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's always different. It's always a different experience in the theater. Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I remember, I'm so glad you said that because I'm, I'm waiting for the scene and it was there and it was over. I'm like, huh, I really could have sworn I felt that more, like that impact me a lot yeah. more. Her, her crying and watch. wailing is the reason a coworker of mine hates the movie. Really? He does not like it because he cannot stand, like he is like, physically unnerved by Florence Pugh's You're crying. To be. Like, so when we saw Don't Worry Darling, oh, yeah. I could not stand it when she's crying, but she cries the whole movie. I've not seen it. I couldn't. It, it, it's funny because in Midsummer, it's like, oh, Florence Pugh is really good at acting upset and crying where it's it's actually very hard to convincingly cry in movies. Oh, yeah. Look at Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Her crying scenes I mean, are awful. True. They're terrible. Not true. as bad as... The scene in one of my favorite movies. You know. Ah! <laughs> yeah, but like, think like that. But then like Florence Pugh, it, fe- it actually feels pretty real. And not in like, because sometimes when people wail away or go crazy, it's fun because you're like, oh, this is really good. This is more of a, oh. Mm-hmm. Like you feel it. And he, he, he does not like the way she cries. And then Don't Worry Darling is if Olivia Wilde saw Midsummer and said, Let's make Florence Pugh cry in every scene. Whereas Midsummer, she only cries a couple times, like big cries. Exactly. If, don't worry, Darren. It's like the whole movie. God. It I, literally is. It's like it's that's, literally that's, only two times, the beginning like big, and then yeah, two big times. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. They, they say because like she know they, I'm assuming that once they cast her, she's like, well, she's really good. Let's say that for like more impactful moments for Olivia. Oh well, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to overdo it. <laughs> you want it to feel authentic, but you also want it to like have that. Wait, it's, it's, you know, mm-hmm. showing too much of a good thing doesn't really make keep it a good thing. Anymore. Exactly. So there is one thing that I do want to mention that did actively terrify me in this Ooh, movie. Let's go. Um, and it is the most probably awkward scene in the movie. Are you referring to the sex scene? Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Oh, it's a scene, baby. It's so, something. It wasn't there, the vision. There, there are whole discussions about the scene being problematic. Which continue, Jake. I would like to. I would be interested in hearing those. I would. I've too. read a little I bit. I, I I don't have. I'm not well read in in that to know how to explain it. I'd say read upon it yourself because I'm not going to be able to explain that. However, um, he was drugged. I think that's the big thing. Mm. Yes. But he chose to be drugged. 
He did. Like that. Like that. When when he was sitting and watching Danny do, and they the handed him the drink. Thing, there's like he just. Well, he, and he went in there and they gave him a drug before he went in and he took it and he knew what he was going in there to do. Oh, what they blew it? the stuff in his face. Yeah. Too. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like he didn't know what he was going in there to do. Well, it's like I, and that's why I supposed to go back to that scene where he took the drink while Danny was like. He was looking at her. Like, he wasn't even looking at Danny. That's the thing. And she's winning. Like she's doing great in this. He's not even like looking. He's just looking at the his the, the hot thing. Paley's sister, who was um, wanted to get with him. And that's the only thing. He's like, should I? Should I? I'm gonna do it. Screw it. And then he just took it. So it's. Yeah. Anyway, so it wasn't the, albeit unnecessarily awkward and creepy way that that scene plays out. It, albeit even funny way that that scene plays out. <laughs> it's, it was the soundscape when they started to like <sighs> moan, moan it, but but then it wasn't in like si- it wasn't in like sync. It was kind of like echoey and like, and like weird. And I was like, I can't do that. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa! No, 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 no! I cannot. I can't imagine being on set for that. How <laughs> do you? I, 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 I just, I'm baffled. Well, clothes <laughs> set. Oh, of definitely. course. Oh, but definitely. also, there's like 15 people in the shot. That are all and just completely. Yes. And it's like, I, I've always thought about that with any movie where there's where there's nudity. It's really interesting. It's like, this is kind of weird. I have some like old cinematographer guy staring through a camera lens at my boobs. <laughs> How do I feel I, about this? I know that it gets for a movie and there's nothing like it's just an mm-hmm. awkward situation. It's the same on when you have to film love scenes. Like this mm-hmm. is really weird. Like and that's what I I really and that's why love scenes more often than not end up weird. Yeah, like I like you have to have so much sights. Top Gun, <laughs> both Top Guns. Yes. Um. Yeah, it's just so. And like I yeah I don't I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> you haven't said anything in three sentences. You keep cutting yourself off. It's funny. Well, just because like I, just, I, I do it. It's just funny. It's like, I don't. I just. Know how to, like, I like, just. But then we. Uh, uh, I. I don't. I just. I don't know what else to say. I'm like what else to say? You gotta say something. Well, I mean, just about that scene. He's left speechless like, about I, it, that scene. Like I really just. It, it makes me feel all sorts of ways. And I mean, people have deconstructed this movie. Oh. I, I mean, right down to. <laughs> Okay, this is gonna give it a bit graphic, people. When he comes out of the hut, his junk is red. There have been deconstruction conversations based on that. You know what the director said? The girl was a virgin. That seems sure. Whatever. <laughs> I have not seen okay. those analyses, but I now I want to. It's just it's a very interesting thing to um, dissect. <laughs> For me, the most terrifying thing about this movie is not only is everything done uh, broad daylight, wide out in the open. Another mm-hmm. thing is the sun doesn't completely go down at this yeah. time of the year. But also, they're okay with this, the, the people who live there. This is just normal. Yeah. And, like, I was thinking, I didn't realize this the first time. I thought this was every year. No, this is like a, like a, what, a, every 90 years they do the bear thing. I think that's for a harvest, probably. for a good harvest. Because I know they so, do. So the bear thing is not every year, but like when people get too old, they do do that. They do bring out outsiders in to do like, but they're so, they're, they're all okay with it. And then the, like the after when, when uh, Simon and Connie are like freaking out and trying to leave, I was like, why didn't you explain that to him? We see this is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's terrifying. They're just okay with this. This just This is just part of their culture. They don't bat an eye. That's terrifying to think about. It's just, it, yeah. They're not being malicious. They're just doing their their, their 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 customs, their practices. It's just that just unnerves me like nothing else. And I'm glad you said I, the. I must be broken. It doesn't unnerve me. It's just them being, them. <laughs> Which is yeah, scary it's just, to think someone's mind is wired that way. Yeah, I guess. It, it's. I mean, like, it's great. I mean, this is a very dramatized movie. Like that doesn't well, yeah, happen in real life. I mean, well, but like, that there's we still. Know of, who knows? There's still, that's what I'm going to say, there's still light shades of, like, something that, like, just a normal, like, us, just we as, like, just normal Americans. Like, we, we don't, like, we look at, like, there's, like, probably, like, different places and whoever that just do something completely different that we don't think, you know, doesn't make any sense. But to them, it's just their natural way of life. It's so interesting thing to look at. And I like that they really, they really got us, and I 
I'm going to start going to like, I because I love the cinematography of this. I'm glad you mentioned all the daylight stuff. The open, like the, not the open, the shot when they are going into when they're driving and it flips. It flips. See now everyone does that I now. I know. It's I become know. it's, it's a, become a joke now. It's such a thing because it's like like I saw the meme. It's like whenever the movie has an upside down shot, slowly turn right side up, and it shows all the like the film people. Are, <laughs> it, it is a meme. It, it's easy to make fun of us for like liking but, that. But, but in the theater, all of us yeah. at that shot. Ooh. <laughs> I know. But now everyone does that. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's so perfectly sets up because, like, it, like, takes, like, that shot is, like, telling you, take your expectations and flip it upside down because you are not ready for what's about to happen. And I just think it did, it did that so well. And one thing that I specifically wrote down is one of, like, so, I'm trying to remember when the shot, so, uh, in a shot, this is verbatim from my thing, in the shot after they just got there and they take their stuff away and they go to, uh, and after they made, they made up uh, Pele's, I think it was brother or whatever, and they were um, just walking. They were walking towards the table, okay? And the group, our group, was still, like, deep in the shot, but the table was even deeper, and they, they managed to get the focus of the camera not on the group but on the table. And in the daylight, like, in how close they were in the frame, that's kind of tricky to do, to get that focus nailed just right, that it doesn't, like follow your actual group of people and follow the table because the table is what's in the shot the table is what's important and i just thought that was really really impressive and there's so many different instances of that like where i just i just it, it baffles me to think that ari aster is this smart and he just comes up with different ways to freak you out and to like point your focus where he thinks it should be i want to plug if you if anybody out here likes watching ari aster movies if you like robert eggers those two are on an A24 podcast and they give a long conversation about like just the movies they like and their kind of influences and it is a fantastic listen. I cannot recommend it. Yeah, so uh, they they're not getting much uh, traffic. Our podcast is going to give them the the, <laughs> the the slate bump. We're going to call it the slate bump. Obviously, we are more slate bump. <laughs> slate bump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm curious to see uh, the Midsummer Director's Cut. The, I never watched you, it, but the, I know it's because you can the, never get a hold of it. I think the only way you could buy it was the A24 store, and it's out of print. Okay, because I, I know think, it was in there. But it had a limited theatrical run, mm -hmm. and Hammy, who was on this podcast before, uh, saw it, and he said there are scenes that some of it it's like yeah this is a director's cut. those don't need to be in there but he said some scenes in the director's cut make other things more interesting and he said he's he was like i'm curious to see how you would react to that because of how it adds to the story but i i didn't check my blu-ray i should have I'm, I'm wondering if there were any deleted scenes on there but I'm, I'm just curious because the it's like I'm looking at that. Like it's like 25 minutes added or something. It's like 170 wow, some a minutes. That's a good chunk of time added to. So it. I'm just curious that's a good what chunk he's of time talking added about. Added to a very long movie already. It is a long movie. Yeah. Pays yeah. pays pretty well for a that's long movie. That's the thing. It's. I like, wonder if I watched it a second time if I would feel its length more. That's the thing is this is maybe at least my fourth or fifth watch, if not more, and it's still just I watch it and I'm just sucked in. Like I completely forget. Because, interestingly enough, because it was this long, I still had to break up my viewings a little bit. But I finished the movie while I was um, I was in the gym. And so I'm watching this, and, like, I blink and I'm done. Because I'm like, holy crap, this thing just flew, flew by. Was it leg day? It was leg day, actually, yeah. That's like, hey, why it went fast, because <laughs> you're trying to get your mind off leg day. And I just could and I just, it, it's so easy just to fall into this world. It's, it's done so well. Okay, guys, is there anything else about Midsommar? I think I said everything I needed to. All right. Jake, anything to add? We didn't even talk about anything in the yellow building. The yellow building. At the end? Yeah. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I, 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 like the try, like the, the try. Nothing about how it's interesting about the... the I, I, I'm going to call him a priest. That's not actually what he is. The dude that gives, the dude, the dude that gives. Oh gosh, they had names. Oh, wasn't his name like Father Rod or something? No, 
the the two that burn the two that burn oh, from the, the two that just yeah was one, one wasn't one of them the it was Paley's brother yeah yeah and the other was I think the dude that got mad at Will Poulter main pro uh, yeah I yeah I think you're I think that's who that was but one of them he gives the leaf to and says here you won't feel any pain. It's very interest. It's a very interesting statement that then then he does feel pain, which is then echoed by everyone outside. Well, the thing is, the the way that they were outside the building reacting, I think they were just, at least to me, what the burning of that uh, building symbolizes is just burning and putting away all your um. It's take it was drowning your, all the um, evil out. They're the, they're yeah, the evil. they're starting anew for the harvest. Yeah. And so I think with, like, the way they're screaming, they're just trying to, like, vocalize and just physicalize oh. the, their, like, all their... See, no, I connected that more to um, what Danny had with the screaming with the women. Interesting. Because, yeah, I... I and, that, and that's part of why I say I wish that was more flushed out. Well, I, so I, that I, I think it's one of those things that's just open to your own personal interpretation. Oh, yeah. I, again. And maybe the director's cut has more. I don't. I, I wish I knew. Mm-hmm. I mean, I go back and forth because I do tend to like more ambiguous kind of endings and stuff like that, where you can get your own interpretation from. I don't like everything spelled out like other properties do, but um, like a Nolan movie. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just went one side of the spectrum all the way to the other one. Love. <laughs> okay, we get it. But <laughs> you're my ghost, Murph. <laughs> Murph. I, 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 had, I had to. I had to. <laughs> Don't forget the wormhole. <laughs> it's so funny. It's not supposed to be. It's, it's so funny. Not, but it is. I kind of want to watch that movie again. Oh no. You know, I really do. I like after Tenet turned me off of Christopher Nolan. Like I want to just. Kinda that was the my, shatter point, wasn't it? It was. I want to dip my toes back in the water and just try it again. You know, just to see. That'll be our next series after. Then we already did our favorite Christopher Nolan. No, 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 no. Series where we watch them all and yeah. discuss them all. Ooh. Starting with following. All right. Yeah. I like it. Well, if you want to see more series that we have going on, there's a great way to do that. We are on social media and we're constantly posting about new episodes we got and what we got going on. And if you want to follow us, Jared, where can they follow us? You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, he laughs Radio. because he thinks he's funny on TikTok. I have funny moments. You can also watch us here on YouTube and see our funny faces. Like, yeah. subscribe, ring our bell, comment, rate us on all those apps, and check out our groovy website. It's Pretty Wizard. It is pretty cool. And so if you want to stay up to date, next episode of our favorites is going to be my seventh favorite pick, which you're going to fact check me, but um, Inglorious Bastards. Well, you could have just waited for me to guess it, but I would have guessed wrong. You said guess. fact check it. You didn't say. I let think me he was going to guess. I was going to guess. So I would have been wrong. But yeah, so next episode is going to be us talking about Inglorious Bastards. So give that a watch, and then come on back to enjoy our conversation. So from all of us here at All Slate Media, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We cannot wait to see you next time, and we will see you then. Don't drink anything red. Wizard. Wizard.